Good morning everyone, welcome to our reading comprehension lesson for this morning. The ally is to recognise and discuss poetic techniques. Up to now we've been covering these poetic techniques, which we've not really used that phrase, we've just called them similes, metaphors, onomatopoeia, alliteration and repetition. So we are going to now begin to use that phrase, poetic techniques. Now before we start, you do need a pencil or pen, piece of paper, and you are in control of the pause button. We will start the lesson as normal with a quiz. So get ready to begin the quiz. So number one will be, what is the word given to a describing word? And you can write the first letter of the word. Verb, adjective, noun, or pronoun. Number two, a comparison using like or as is a metaphor, alliteration, conjunction, simile. Just write the first letter of the word. Number three, when objects are given human characteristics, we call them, is it a metaphor, personification, onomatopoeia, transience. So write the first letter of the word. Number four, when an aspect of a text is emphasised by, be, by being used more than once, in other words, repeated, it is called underlining, emphasis, rewind or repetition. If you want, if you choose rewind, rewind write R-E-W and if it's repetition write R-E-P. Otherwise, otherwise just write the first letter of the other words. Number five, a direct comparison does not use like or as. Simile, analogy, connection or metaphor. Number six, crash, meow, click, clang are examples of adverbs, similes, onomatopoeia, nouns. Now hopefully you've been able to keep up. You've not had to press the pause button. So we're going to mark these six before we go to the next slide as we have another four on slide three. So number one should be the describing word is an adjective. A comparison using like or as, simile. Objects given human characteristics. If you chose metaphor, that's correct. If you chose personification, that's correct as well. Personification is a type of metaphor. It's when you turn a non-living thing like a rock and give it human characteristics. Number four, when an aspect of a text is emphasized by being used more than once, repetition. Number five, a direct comparison that does not use like or as, metaphor. Crash, meow, click, clang, onomatopoeia. How did you do? Are you now becoming more familiar with these specific words which are part of the poetic devices or poetic techniques that poets use and you've been using yourself in lessons. So did you get six out of six? Great if you did. Five out of six, still very very good. If you got four out of six, you need to do some revision on your poetic techniques. Let's look at number seven. When more than a word begins with the same consonant sound, sorry, when more than one word begins with the same consonant sound or letter, it is called onomatopoeia, alliteration, rhyme, or repetition. Four ferrets fell to the ground is an example of onomatopoeia, alliteration, rhyme, or metaphor. 
When similarities in sound are found within a poem, it is called rhyme, rhythm, onomatopoeia, or imagery. Now that's similarities in sound. And number 10, which is the last one, writing that appeals to the five senses is called imagery. So when you read a phrase, you will use one of your senses to identify the phrase. It could be something to do with sound, could have something to do with touch or taste or something that you hear. So you're using your senses to create an image of what's happening in your mind. So let's mark those. Number seven, consonant sound or letter will be alliteration. The next one. Four ferrets fell to the ground. They, four ferrets fell. They all begin with the same consonant sound or letter alliteration. Similarities in sound rhyme. And the last one, five senses imagery. So let's move on. I've got a feeling I made a mistake on that. Apologies. Okay, so here are your poetic devices or techniques. So you've got rhyme. So rhyming words occur very often in poems, and you've been able to do that in your own poems. Onomatopoeia. Everyone who's sent in poetry at some point have been able to use onomatopoeia. So the words imitate the sound. Bang and splash. Similes. Most people who have done poetry have been able to write similes. Metaphors, much trickier. Some people have been able to write metaphors. So if you said the rock laughed, you're turning the rock into, or giving that the rock human characteristics. Rocks don't laugh, but you just want to try and make it more descriptive. So metaphors are definitely tricky or trickier. Alliteration, all the poems I've seen, People have done alliteration. So starting words, all the words start with the same letter. Repetition, people have been able to do that. We've talked about rhythm. The punctuation we've talked about. The punctuation controls how quickly or slowly you read. So that goes with tone and pace. Tone, and, tone is more about the expression that you use when you read a piece of poetry. And then from your expression, the reader will be able to understand, is it frightening? Is it a very happy poem? Is there humour? And so on. And pace goes with the rhythm. So the punctuation will control how quickly or slowly you'll be able to read a piece of poetry. So let's now move on to a little recap. I might have to exit here and then go back in again because this tends to, to play up. So I'm hopefully going to be able to get to the video. Let me see. Not able to do it. I'll see if I can do it now. Apologies for the delay. It's very, very annoying. OK, here we go. So we're going to watch a video and it's just a recap on poetic devices. Now, hopefully this will load very quickly. Otherwise, I'll have to put it in my iMovie and redo it. Something is happening. Apologies. So I will get rid of this. Oh, here we go. Figurative language devices. Figurative language uses figures of speech to be more effective, persuasive, and impactful. Similes. Similes compare one thing to another using the word like or as.
NASCAR driver revved his engine. I loved the sound of sizzling bacon. Personification! Personification is when a thing, idea, or animal is given human attributes. Lightning danced across the sky. My alarm clock yells at me every morning. The birds sung with joy. Alliteration! Alliteration is when a number of words have the same first consonant sound. The wire licked his ribs. Those horses have heavy hooves. The red roses were wrapped in ribbon. Simile! Time is as valuable as money. Metaphor! Time is money. Onomatopoeia! Did you forget to flush the toilet? Personification! The last piece of cake was calling my name. Alliteration! The sly, slithering snake snuck into the shed. That's the end of our video! Bye-bye now! Well, there we have it. So, let's move on. Now, hopefully, all of those poetic devices are becoming more familiar to you and you will be able to recognize them when you read a piece of poetry. Okay, so today, we're going to look at a poem on the water cycle, which is apt because the weather has changed from being sunny to overcast and a bit rainy at times. So I have an illustration here for you because when you read the poetry, hopefully the words will trigger your senses and you'll be able to imagine what's happening in the poem. So there are some key words in that illustration. Evaporation, condensation and precipitation. Well, let's look at the poem and it will all make sense. So here's the water cycle. If you look at the poem, you can see at the moment there are three verses. There are actually five, but I can't fit all five vertically, so I have to show the other two after this. So you can see in the poem I've highlighted cycle, evaporation, vapor, condensation. Why have I done that? Because they are words that you may not be familiar with. So when you do any reading, it's important that you find out words in the writing or in the text. Find out the meaning of the words that you don't know. So cycle. A cycle is when you have, for instance, the water cycle. It starts with water in the lake. It dries, the water evaporates or changes from a liquid to a gas because the sun heats it up and then as that gas or vapor we call it, the gas or vapor as it rises higher into the sky it begins to cool and then it begins to change again because vapor is invisible, we can't see it but as it cools it becomes visible and what can we see in the, in the sky? Clouds. So that vapor changes to clouds. That's what we call condensation. When the vapour becomes cooler, it begins to get a bit heavier and we then be able to see it again visibly. And then when that cloud gets really heavy, it starts changing from a white colour to grey to black and it begins to rain. So the precipitation is rain. And we'll talk about precipitation later because that word appears in verse 4. So let me read the poem. Water cycle. Water travels round and round from the sky to the ground. In a cycle you can't see. Water comes to you and me. Evaporation is a start, but it's not the only part. From sea to sky 
vapour floats like invisible boats. In the sky, water cools, forming clouds, like fish form schools. Condensation makes it dense, like dollars have 100 cents. So, cycle, you should understand it. It's like going from number one to number two, number three to number four, and then back to number one. It goes round. Evaporation, water changes from a liquid to a gas because the sun heats the water. Vapour is another word for gas and gas is invisible that's why it has in the fourth line in verse 2 vapor floats like invisible boats there is gas in the sky but we can't see it so they use the phrase floats like invisible boats condensation what well, you can see in that verse essentially the gas begins to cool and it changes into something we can see, and that's clouds. So let's look at verse 4. Then it falls precipitation. It's like group participation. Rain and hail, sleet and snow, water dances down and falls. Plant shout out, we can grow. Verse 5. It fills up lakes, streams and seas. We can drink it as we please. Water used to brush our teeth. Water wets the coral reef. Water, water, what we need. We need water to succeed. And water cycle keeps it fresh. Water cycle, you're the best. And that's all of the poem. Five verses. You can see it has a particular shape. Some of the verses have more lines in them than others. So it's not all the same, not structured exactly the same. But the important part is when you read the words in each verse, you should be able to understand what those words all mean. So precipitation, if you're not sure, precipitation is another word for rain, hail, sleet, snow. It could be hailstones as well. It's something we call showers. If we have torrential rain, it means it's just very heavy rain. So pre precipitation is all the moisture or liquid that falls from the sky and it eventually becomes water if, if it was sleet or snow for instance. So let's have a look at your activity. What I forgot to say is that um, in that first verse on the other slide there is a slight difference. I've got round and round, round and round. That line two and two is repeated and is in line three as well. But it's not in the poem that I just read. So what's the ally to recognize and discuss poetic features? So if you're not sure about the poem, then try and read it and make sense of it. Task number one. Draw images or illustrations for each verse that help develop an understanding of what the verse is about. So draw a simple picture, doesn't have to be super artistic, to show what verse 1 looks like. And verse 2, what does that look like? Verse 3 and so on. Draw a simple image or illustration. It's because it goes with this imagery idea, when you read words or phrases, you should be able to form a picture of your mind of what it looks like if you were watching a film, for instance. And that's what happens normally when people read. We're not always aware of it, but as you read, your brain creates pictures in your, in your mind. And it's like as you read, you have a, a movie going on inside your head. And that's why you need to understand the vocabulary in the poetry. Okay, so try and draw any images. You were doing that yesterday, and this is just a continuation of yesterday, transferring words into images. Task two, I've not discussed the poem with you. You should be able to recognize the poetic devices by now. So find examples of one, alliteration, two, 
metaphors, three onomatopoeia. Are there any onomatopoeic words there? Four repetition, five rhyme, six similes. Now the most difficult one there is metaphors. So find examples of those in the poem. Right, once you've finished, email your work to yr3 at grange.harrow.sch.uk. Thank you very much again. Your poetry, your reading comprehension has been great to read. So you are doing a very, very good job. Most people have been, they've been able to read the poetry and they've been able to answer questions successfully. Occasionally, one or two questions, I need to explain them to you, but most people are doing a great job. So keep on doing that. And the poetry that I'm receiving, I've really, really enjoyed reading your poetry. So I'm going to share some of the poetry this morning in the writing lesson. So good luck with this task. I look forward to, to reading your work. Take care. Bye for now.